Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat, you're watching iGAN and it's time for another episode of Let's Game. Now in our previous episode, we showed you how to build a gaming PC in about 70 to 75,000 rupees. Now since making that video, not only have we installed and downloaded and played a whole lot of games on this machine, we made two additional upgrades. But before we get into gaming and those upgrades, let's talk about the parts that we used for this PC build. Now to start off with the cabinet, we went with the Corsair Carbide Series Spec 01. Now this is a steel gaming case. It also has red LED lights and a display window, which basically helped me get started with the black and red theme that I was thinking of. We also went with the Corsair CX650 power supply. Now I wanted to choose a modular power supply, but at the time of ordering, it wasn't available. So I went with the non-modular one, but I would recommend going for the modular one so that then the extra cables are not lying around at the bottom of your cabinet. Aesthetically, we also went with the Circle 120mm 15 LED cooling fan. Now this is a silent cooling fan and it adds a whole lot of red color to the build. Again, this was a non-expensive accessory which made the machine look good and also keep the cooling in check. To also get some more red color in there, I installed Cooler Master uh, Universal red LED strips. Now these are magnetic which makes them good. You can swap them around, change positions and uh, basically because they're magnetic, you don't have to permanently stick them inside your machine. For the motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte Z370M D3H motherboard. Now, there are certain reasons that I went with this motherboard. Although it's not a full-size motherboard, it's a smaller mini-size uh, motherboard. But it does have a few features and for the price benefit that I was getting, it was giving me the same kind of features as a full-size motherboard. So it was definitely worth the choice. Also, it does have two M.2 SSD ports, which means that in the future, if I want to install M.2 SSDs, that expandability is available and for a relatively low price supporting the 8th generation Intel Core i chipsets. Now speaking of the 8th generation Core i CPUs, I use the Core i5-8400 CPU. Now this is the 8th generation one. It does have 6 cores and 6 threads, 2.8 gigahertz on the clock with a maximum turbo of 4 gigahertz. It does support Intel Optane which means that the M.2 SSD slots can use Intel Optane and it does have Intel UHD graphics 630 uh, within the chipset itself or within the CPU itself which means that it does have a good amount of graphics power in there and anything more than this would have really stretched the budget out so I stuck with this. Now there is one thing we changed instead of using the HyperX Fury RAM we swapped that out with two sticks of A data 8 gigabyte RAM. Now this is 3000 megahertz and it is RGB RAM and it fits in beautifully and because of the customizations that are available in the software you can really customize the kind of look that you want so you don't have to stick with red LEDs. You can have a color wheel. You can have a singular color. You can completely swap that around. The utility is quite extensive and it will allow you to customize the build quite a lot. Now for graphics, we went with the Gigabyte GTX 1060 with 3 gigabyte of GDDR5 RAM. It does support DirectX 12 and it is an overclockable graphics card, which means that once you install it and install all the drivers, you launch the Gigabyte utility and you can totally tweak around the graphics card, increase the voltages, increase the performance, increase the fan speed. Depending on how much and how you're using this graphics card, you can totally exploit it and get a lot more performance from it. Now it does have several variants available with several boost clocks. The one that we got was a 1797 megahertz boost clock. It does support 8K displays and it ran most of our games in really high frame rates and we'll tell you about that in just a minute. Now I also added the TP-Link simple wireless nano adapter in the USB plug to get myself some Wi-Fi and with this now I paid this machine with the HP Envy 27 inch 4K monitor. Now this is a standard 16 is to 9 
aspect ratio monitor but it looks fantastic it's got a matte finished body a really solid metal frame and really good resolutions with 178 by 178 viewing angle now if you're looking for something with a better response time and a more gaming aspect you'll look for slightly less resolution displays if you want to keep them in a budget depending on what your budget is swap around the monitor now i wanted a wireless mechanical gaming keyboard and luckily logitech makes one it's the g613 wireless gaming keyboard it's a hefty keyboard it does come with a palm rest as well weighing in at 1.9 kilograms now it's got roma g keys from logitech these are custom keys made by them they are really tactile and are rated for 70 million keystrokes so you'll use this keyboard for a really long time the only downside to this i feel is that there is no backlighting or any rgb support i think i managed to do enough red lighting with the setup so i decided to keep the keyboard at a subtle and uh, this keyboard is fantastic it does have dedicated gaming keys and it does have uh, several options that you can enable it connects over wi-fi and it also connects over using the dongle that it comes with which is ideal for gaming now i paid the keyboard up with the logitech g603 wireless gaming mouse now this is a really great mouse completely wireless it does have the light speed wireless tech from logitech just like the keyboard it connects at one millisecond of response time you also have 12,000 dpi modes in this all the way from 200 to 12,000 and uh, battery life is rated for 500 hours of continuous use and it uses standard AA batteries which you can swap around lots of gaming keys extremely ergonomical really good to use so definitely check this out i'll leave links to everything that i've used in this build in the description below now for the cpu cooler i also decided to upgrade the stock cooler with the cooler master hyper 212 cpu cooler again this has red led lights and that was primarily one of the reasons i wanted to use it you can install two cooling fans on this on either side so depending on what you want for your build it comes completely set up it works with amd as well as intel chipsets so a really budget cpu cooler if you don't want to go in for high-end coolers this one is a good step also because this is not an unlocked cpu you really do not need that much cooling going on now once we had that we installed a couple of red leds a red lamp got some red speakers on there and uh, with the whole setup completed also used a red chair and our gaming setup was fully complete now i'm extremely pleased with the way the machine came out we decided to run some benchmarks and with geekbench we got fantastic scores on single core as well as multi-core on the geekbench 4 benchmark we also got fantastic OpenCL scores for the graphics card upwards of 130,000 which makes this gaming machine ideal for the kind of monies that we spent on it which was not a lot to begin with. Now after all of that it's finally time to check out some of the gaming. Previously you guys commented saying that we weren't playing enough games so we downloaded a whole set of games using our Steam account and uh, we're gonna play some of those. But before we get into those games we decided to play Gears of War downloaded from the Microsoft Store. Now Gears of War 4 at 2k resolution or at 4k resolution with everything on high or maximum we got anywhere from 50 to 60 fps while the game was on 4k even though the gameplay experience was not the best we downgraded the resolution just a little bit to get upwards of 60 fps which made the gaming experience quite a lot good look alive tv's incoming Next up, we decided to play Wolfenstein The New Colossus with this at again a 2K resolution with everything turned up to high. We got a fantastic 60 FPS standard out of this gaming machine, which made the gaming experience fantastic. Now, granted that this GPU can run Wolfenstein in 4K, you will lose some frames, bringing down the frame rate to about 40 to 45 FPS. But the gaming experience in itself was quite impressive and you'll thoroughly enjoy gaming on this machine. Now moving on we also played Grand Theft Auto 5 and maintaining anywhere from 60 to 100 FPS on this machine with a 2K resolution running on DirectX 10.1 or even on DirectX 11. We got a fantastic gaming response from this machine and it manages to run the game at maximum frame rates without any problem.
Next up, we decide to play Call of Duty World War 2. Now this game also runs at full graphics, at full textures, full motion blur. This is one of my favorite games right now and it's a lot of fun to play and on this build it manages to run beautifully with motion blur and sky textures, everything turned up to maximum. You get a really impressive gaming experience from the game and you'll forget that you've been playing this game for hours and hours on end. And finally, for Player Unknown Battlegrounds or PUBG, we decided to play this game as well to get anywhere from 60 to 100 FPS on maximum graphics that we could enable on this while playing natively. We were getting some connectivity issues initially while we were playing or testing this out. But once the game was fully loaded and connected to the servers properly, we got a fantastic gaming experience from this game as well. And the graphics, the overall performance from the CPU turned out to be fantastic. So overall, our Let's Game Build 2 was quite a success. We got fantastic performance from the machine, excellent gaming capability for the kind of monies we spent. And we have really tickled our senses and tried to get the best out of this machine. Of course, you can tweak around with the RAM a little bit and you can tweak around with the graphics card as per your understanding a little bit to get slightly more performance. But what really matters in the future is something that we want to work on is a completely unlocked build, trying to stretch it to the maximum and we'll see what we can get from that machine. Now, as always guys, links to everything that we've featured in this video will be in the description below. If you guys liked it, don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team iGun. Now, I have a couple of questions for you guys. The parts that we've chosen are also compatible with Hackintosh. So do you guys want me to build this machine into a Hackintosh build? And if so, do you guys want a tutorial of how to convert this machine into a Hackintosh? Second, and this one's probably gonna be a yes, but do you guys want a giveaway for this particular machine if you do don't forget to spread the word with your friends and leave a comment in the comment section below if i get enough comments telling me to give this machine away we'll start another giveaway for the gaming pc part 2 which is the black and red theme and uh, as always guys this has been Bharat nagpal thank you for watching i will see you in the next one